when you meditate, you've got to have principles in your meditation. Otherwise, you just flounder around. You have no idea where you're going, what you're doing. And the principles come down to the, the Buddha's first teaching, the Dharma wheel. This forms the basis for everything else that he taught. So when you look at the Dharma wheel up on the wall there, try to remember what it stands for and how it applies to you. It's not just a, a wheel on the wall. But it's supposed to refer to some truths in the mind. In the Buddhist first, first sermon, the Dharma wheel, which part of the sermon is the wheel? It's the part where he talks about the Four Noble Truths and the duties appropriate to each. And that's it. Those are the big issues in our practice. Our problem is that we tend to bring other issues in as well and forget the basic ones that are really important, that really get results. The Four Truths are stress, its cause, its cessation, and the path to its cessation. Now those aren't just abstract principles, they're ways of it's a way of dividing up the pie of your experience. What you've got right here. There's part of it that's stressful, there's part of it that's craving, and there's part of it that's the things you can do to be a, that would bring about the end of that stress, bring about the end of that craving. And buried in there is a cessation of stress. So one thing we have to do is learn how to ferret these things out. Once we've got them ferreted out, then we figure out what we've got to do with them. Like wherever there's stress, the Buddha says to know it, to comprehend it. Now to comprehend it, that means the mind has to be in a position where it's not afraid of it. Because the major stress that we run into in meditation, of course, is pain. We sit here and after a while this part of the body aches, the legs begin to hurt, sometimes your back hurts. Or you may come in here and you're not feeling too well. And many times we sit here thinking, what can we do to make the pain go away? Well, that's not following the, the duty with regard to pain or the task with regard to pain. The task is to comprehend it, which means that the mind has to be in a position where it's willing to just comprehend the pain without any other motives getting mixed in. This is where the fourth truth comes in. You've got to develop the path. In particular, you've got to develop your powers of mindfulness and concentration. If your concentration isn't up to the task, then no matter how much you try to comprehend stress, it just won't work. It's like aiming with a gun. No matter how good your eyesight is, if, you're, if your hand isn't steady, the hand holding the gun isn't steady, you're never going to be able to hit the target. Or if you do hit the target, it's going to be hit or miss. What you need is real steadiness of mind. So what do you do? You're sitting here and there's a pain in your leg. You don't focus on the pain. You focus any place else where there isn't pain. In other words, as long as you're not up to fighting it off, and don't get involved with it. Just let the pain be in the leg. Remind yourself that the pain isn't, has no intention to harm you or hurt you. It's just something that's there. And if you get involved with it, it's going to be troublesome. If you don't get involved with it, it's just going to be there in the leg. So you focus on another part of the body. It's a place where you can develop your powers of concentration, develop your parts of mindfulness, powers of mindfulness. Work with the breath so you have a comfortable spot. <clears throat> and work on focusing on that and ignoring the pain. It's a very important lesson in concentration. is learning how to ignore other things that are irrelevant to what you're doing. Once you have that sense of a base inside, a place where the breath is comfortable, where the mind is comfortable, then you can think of letting that comfort, sense of comfort spread from that spot. You don't have to move your attention from that spot. Just think of the sense of comfort radiating out from there, down through the body. And you see that it tends to go on. There are also kind of channels in there, like the, the channels you see in a Chinese acupuncturist model. 
Then once you tap into this sense of comfort at one spot, then you can let it flow out through other parts of the body. And then in case there's a pain, say, in your knee, you think of the comfortable breath, breath just flowing out past the knee, down through the foot and out. If it's in your shoulder, think of it going down through the shoulder and out the arm. In other words, you take the sense of comfort as your base and you use that. And sometimes you find that the pain actually goes away, that it was just a breath, it was a pain that was caused by a problem with the energy flow in the body. When the energy flow is right, then it's gone. But you notice that other kinds of pain, if they don't go away, well, it doesn't really matter because you've got a good solid place for the mind. And you find that as you do this, you develop more and more confidence and you feel less and less afraid of the pain. You feel you can manage it. When the mind is in that state, then it's ready to take on the pain. You really look at it simply with the purpose of comprehending it. Whether it goes away or not doesn't matter. That's when you can really perform one of the tasks appropriate to the Noble Path, the Noble Truths. You just comprehend the pain. Otherwise, you're, if you haven't gotten to that point yet, you're, you're, you focus on the pain. How can I make this pain go away? Well, that desire to make it go away is part of the origination of stress. And so it just piles more problems on top of things. So you've got to get the mind in a position of strength where its motivation is just to comprehend the pain, to take it apart, to analyze, to understand how it comes, how it goes. All of this when you've got a good, solid base of concentration. If the concentration isn't solid enough yet, no matter how much you try to analyze the pain, things just won't separate out. It's like having a piece of tar on your, stuck to your fingers. Well, you use another finger to take it off. Well, that finger gets stuck. Then you use the other hand to take it off the second finger. Well, that gets stuck, too. It's because you don't have a good solvent yet. You're just using the force of your mind without any real, concentra without any real concentration, without any real discernment. When the mind is still and solid, then, the, then your discernment really cuts through things. Because this is just one application of the principles of the Four Noble Truths, that, that Dharma wheel. What the Buddha had was the Four Noble Truths, and each truth had three levels of knowledge. One was just knowing what the truth was. The second one was knowing the task appropriate to it. And then the third was knowing that the task was done. So when you get all twelve spokes in this wheel, and they, they worked it out as kind of a two different variables, and you work out all the permutations. Back in the time of the Buddha, that was called a wheel. You've got lots of the wheels, say, in the Vinaya, where you have a particular type of action, then you put together with different kinds of intentions and then different kinds of results. And they say, well, if you do this with this intention, you get that result, this is the, the offense. And it just goes on down every permutation. That's called a wheel. In the Buddha's first sermon, the wheel is the Four Noble Truths and the three levels of knowledge appropriate to them. And he said that when he had all twelve types of knowledge. That was what constituted awakening. And that teaching forms the basis for everything else that he taught. The whole issue of skillfulness comes in here, because after all, the Four Noble Truths are related to the issue of skillful cause, skillful result, unskillful cause, unskillful result. So the issues here are how skillfully are you managing your thoughts, your words, and your deeds? Those are the big issues in life. Those are the big issues in the practice. Keep coming back to this issue of skill, which means both understanding and then understanding things in terms of the Four Noble Truths and learning to perform the tasks appropriate to each. So when you run across an impasse in your practice, just stop and think, okay, what do I have here? Do I have, is it stress? Is it craving? Is it an element of the path. Then to remind yourself of what the task, the appropriate task is. Now you find, though, that you can't do one task appropriately without doing the other ones. In other words, you can't really comprehend stress unless you've developed good powers of mindfulness and concentration. You can't let go of craving until you've understood stress. So these things are all connected. And even though it seems rather abstract, it's a good 
framework to have in mind. Because when questions come up in the practice, you ask yourself, well, exactly which of these four categories does that question fall into? And once you know the category, then, then you know how you're going to go about finding your answer. So you want to keep this, this Dharma wheel in mind. Because it helps sort out a lot of the problems in the practice. And it keeps you on keeps you on track. So your mind doesn't wander off in useless issues, useless inquiries, useless questions. It helps you sort out which questions are the ones that are worth following up, which ones are the ones that are worth just putting aside. Cuts through a lot of the underbrush in the mind. And cuts away a lot of the burdens as well. 